Hi everyone, welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. My name is Artem, and here is the news. For 449 days, Ukraine stands strong against the forces of the Russian invasion. Yesterday, Ukrainians celebrated Vyshevanka Day. Vyshevanka is a traditional embroidered shirt which forms a key part of the Ukrainian national dress. Vyshevanka Day is celebrated annually on the third Thursday of May. Commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Valery Zaluzhny, called the Ukraine camouflage pattern Pixel a Ukrainian embroidery of today. Also, annually on May 19th, Ukraine marks Remembrance Day for the victims of the deportation of the Crimean Tatar people by the Soviet authorities in 1944. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky, to mark the day, wore a special Vyshevanka with ornaments that symbolize the unity of the Ukrainian and Crimean Tatar peoples. Zelensky said, let this year's Vyshevanka Day in Ukraine be a reminder of what our people have been through and how strong our culture is. The president also proposed to create a memorial to honor the deportation victims. At the same time, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine called on its international partners, including the participants of the International Crimean Platform, to condemn Russia's crimes against the Crimean Tatar people and recognize the deportation of the Crimean Tatars in 1944 as genocide, reports Deutsche Welle. Deputy Defense Minister of Ukraine Hanna Mahler informed that the enemy has pulled most of its reserves to Bakhmut, Donetsk Oblast, and significantly strengthened the grouping, reports Suspilne. According to her, Ukrainian soldiers repulsed all enemy attacks in a day and controlled the southwestern part of Bakhmut. Mahler added that on the outskirts north of Bakhmut, Ukrainian forces moved forward by 500 meters. In the suburbs of Bakhmut in the south, fierce battles were going on during the day. The enemy went on the offensive and tried to regain the lost territories, but suffered losses and was unable to fulfill his tasks. In some areas, Ukrainian troops advanced one kilometer. Earlier, the 3rd Separate Assault Brigade informed about successful offensive operations in the western outskirts of Bakhmut, reports Channel 5. The winds of the breakthrough area was 2,000 meters and the depth was 700 meters. We would really appreciate if you could recommend us to your friends and family as well as share information on social media. This way more people would learn about the podcast and truth about Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Norwegian Defense Minister Bjorn Graham announced the transfer of radar stations and multiple rocket launchers to Ukraine, reports Interfax Ukraine. After the meeting with his UK counterpart Ben Wallace, Norwegian Defense Minister said that Norway will provide three Arthur artillery location radars and up to eight long-range multiple rocket launchers. The donations will be made in close collaboration with the UK. British Defense Secretary Ben Wallace informed that the long-range Storm Shadow missiles provided by the UK to Ukraine were already used in battle, reports Radio Liberty. According to The Guardian, Wallace didn't provide any further details. Politico informs that the US has repeatedly rejected the possibility of sending F-16 fighters to Ukraine, but does not oppose their transfer to Kyiv by other countries, reports Interfax Ukraine. A high-ranking US defense official told that no such decision has yet been made. According to the media, the pressure on the White House in connection with the possible transfer of fighter jets to Ukraine intensified after the UK announced the start of an international coalition of countries aimed at purchasing F-16 fighters for Ukraine. London said it would soon begin training Ukrainian pilots to fly modern fighter jets. Later, Belgium followed the British example. The publication notes that countries that have purchased the F-16 or any other weapon system from the United States must first obtain Washington's approval before transferring them to a third country. According to CNN, in recent weeks, Joe Biden's administration has informed European allies that the United States will allow them to transfer American F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine, reports Ukrainska Pravda. So far, the White House has not received any official request from any of the allies to transfer F-16 fighters to Ukraine. The F-16 issue is expected to be discussed at the G7 meeting in Japan this week. In addition, this topic will be on the agenda of the annual summit of NATO leaders in Lithuania in July. 
The U.S. Air Force believes that Ukrainian pilots could be trained to fly F-16 fighters in four months, reports European Pravda. According to the internal U.S. Air Force document obtained by the Yahoo News portal, U.S. conducted an assessment of two Ukrainian pilots who were tested in late February and early March at an airbase in Arizona. One of the Ukrainian pilots had experience flying the MiG-29, the other the Su-27. Neither had any previous experience with the F-16 and they were tested in a simulator. According to the assessment, the Ukrainian pilots were able to carry out a number of relatively technical maneuvers in their simulated environments. The U.S. instructors believe that the main problem identified during training was the Ukrainian pilots not being used to the avionics of the F-16s, which displays information in English and general language barrier. The Highlights from Ukraine podcast is a commercial initiative of just two people and we need your help to grow. Share information about the podcast, rate us in the app, subscribe to our Patreon. With your support, we are getting better. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.